and welcome back to my Amateur Radio General License course. It's a wonderful day in the Amateur Radio neighborhood and the airwaves are full of people from all over the world ready to answer your CQ. My hope is that this has been a good resource in helping you to prepare for the FCC license exam. We still have a few chapters to go, so hang in there. Um, to me, one of the exciting aspects of amateur radio is the possibility to repair, design, and even build amateur radio equipment. One way to get started is by building a kit or by building a do-it-yourself project from a magazine or an online, uh, online resource. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This is the uh, Amateur Radio General Class License Course, Lesson Number 7. I'm your instructor, Gary Stevens, KE2GS, that's Kilo Echo 2 Gulf Sierra. This is sub-element uh, G7. Uh, there's three exam questions out of the three groups that we're going to be discussing. Uh, there's a pool of 40 questions that uh, they're derived from. And this uh, covers the 2019 to 2023 general class FCC Element 3 question pool that was effective uh, July 1st of 2019. We'll be going over uh, practical circuits today. So uh, we're going to be talking about power supplies, schematic symbols, um, digital circuits, amplifiers and oscillators, receivers and transmitters, filters and oscillators. So let's dive right into the first section, power supplies and schematic symbols. Have you ever seen somebody use an arc welder? Uh, that's what can happen uh, if you get across a, a circuit, even though the, the device is unplugged, if you get across a capacitor, it can, uh, it can arc. Um, for the exam, you need to know that a power supply be bleeder resistor is useful because it ensures that the filters uh, capacitors are discharged when power is removed. Just like in uh, RF circuits, uh, a choke in a capacitor or an inductor in a capacitor are, are used as uh, filters. Uh, for the exam, uh, you just need to know that uh, capacitors and inductors are common are, uh, components that are used in uh, power supply filter networks. Power diodes can be uh, connected together to form a full wave rectifier that converts uh, AC voltage into a pulsating DC voltage uh, for use in power supplies. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that a full wave rectifier circuit uses two diodes and a center tapped transformer, as you can see in this diagram. A half wave rectifier is defined as a type of rectifier that only uses uh, one half cycle of uh, AC voltage uh, for the waveform to pass. Uh, you can see by the diagram, you know, the, the voltage going in or the waveform going in, and you can see kind of a, uh, just a, a ripple or the top uh, portion of that uh, coming out. But for the exam, you need to know that the advantage of a half-wave rectifier in a power circuit is that it only uses one diode, or only one diode is required. So if a full wave is 360 degrees, um, a half wave can only be 180 degrees. For the exam, just know that the portion of the AC cycle that is converted to DC by the half wave rectifier is 180 degrees. The most common type of uh, power supplies use uh, full wave rectification because uh, as you can get 360 degrees of uh, rectification. Um, and you can, you can see by this uh, uh, schematic diagram uh, how that is happening. Um, for, but for the exam, you need to know that the portion of the AC cycle that is converted to DC by a full wave rectifier is 360 degrees. And here you can see uh, what is meant by a series of pulses because it's not a continuous flat line. You're getting little pulses of, 
of uh, the uh, alternating current. Um, for the exam, just note that a series of DC pulses at twice the frequency of the AC input is the output waveform of an unfiltered full wave rectifier connected to a resistive load. And a common type of power supply these days are, um, are modern uh, power supplies are switch mode uh, power supplies because they're, they're more efficient. Um, for the exam, you need to know that the advantage of a switch mode power supply compared to the linear uh, power supply is the high frequency operations allow the use of smaller components. And of course, what would a uh, license course be without being able to, uh, or without having to recognize uh, symbols? So for the exam, know that symbol 1 in figure G7-1 uh, represents a field effect transistor. You also need to know that uh, symbol 5 in figure G7-1 represents a Zener diode. And you can tell the, the Zener because it, you know, in addition to the straight line, it has a, a downward uh, slant and an upward slant as well. And if you recall from the technician class or, or earlier lessons, um, NPN, uh, you can remember NPN not points in, not pointing in. Uh, if the arrow is not pointing in, it's an NPN. If it's pointing outward, it's a PNP. Or, uh, so uh, for the exam, just know that uh, symbol 2 in figure G7-1 represents an NPN junction dot, uh, transistor. And you'll notice that uh, figure 6 or uh, symbol 6 in the schematic, um, the, the transformer has two lines in the middle, which means that it has a solid core. So for the exam, just know that uh, symbol 6 in the uh, figure G7-1 represents a solid core transformer. And of course, if there's only you know squiggly lines with uh, without uh, par one in parallel, just as a as a uh, inductor, and this one shows a tap. So for uh, symbol seven uh, and figure uh, G seven one represents a tapped inductor. Next up, uh, section uh, G seven B. Uh, Gulf 7 Bravo, uh, digital circuits, amplifiers, and oscillators. Um, this deals with more with vintage equipment and modern uh, amplifiers as well. Um, but uh, just know for the exam that uh, the reason for neutralizing the final amplifier stage of a transmitter is to eliminate self oscillations and of course uh, this is a schematic of an amplifier or a, a neutralizing uh, final amplifier and here we have a uh, schematic of a uh, C uh, class C amplifier uh, for the exam you need to know that uh, class C amplifiers have the highest efficiency. And now we get into uh, logic circuits. Um, so what we show here is, a, is an AND gate, which means that it takes A and B being true for AB or the output to be true. Um, so for the exam, you need to know that the function of a two input AND is the output is high only when both inputs are high. Another common logic gate is a NOR gate. Um, and if you'll know, notice uh, by the, uh, uh, the uh, truth table, uh, the output is true uh, when A or B, or A and B rather, is zero. Uh, so neither A nor B is true as output is true. 
and you can see the the bar over the a plus b uh, that means not or, or inversion so for the exam you need to know that the function of a two input nor gate is the output is low when either or both inputs are high so a three bit binary counter has eight states and you can tell by the information here that we're not in Kansas anymore. So basically what we have here is some JK flip-flops and they're configured in such a way that they, they construct uh, this binary counter. So with each uh, input clock, you notice that, that the states of the outputs change accordingly and you can see it's reflected by the truth, tab truth table. Uh, for the exam, just know that a three-bit binary counter has eight states. Another type of circuit is, is a shift register, and the outputs of the shift registers um, do exactly what they say. The, uh, for each clock pulse, uh, the uh, output of the first gets shifted to the second. Um, for the exam, you just need to know that a shift register is a clocked array of circuits that passes data in steps along the array. Uh, filtering can usually be accomplished by inductors and capacitors. Um, if you notice in this schematic, uh, there are some capacitors that are acting as filters. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that a filter and an amplifier operating uh, in a feedback loop, uh, the feedback, you notice that the output is going back to the uh, input side, um, are basic components of the sine wave oscillator. There's no need to get your calculator out quite yet. I'm just doing this to explain efficiency. Um, an example, for example, um, a 100 watt 40 meter power amplifier draws 10 amps from a 13.7 volt uh, power supply. Uh, power out equals power in. Um, in order to determine that, uh, we divide uh, 100 watts uh, output by the input. Uh, to get the input, we have to multiply 13.7 times 10 because uh, pi or power is I times E. Um, so our efficiency equals 100 watts divided by 137, which comes to 0 0.72992707. Uh, which is 73 percent. For the exam, however, you need to know that to determine the efficiency of an RF power amplifier, divide the RF output power by the DC input power. So a tank circuit is a, a parallel combination of a capacitor and inductor and is uh, it's most common uh, for a resonant circuit. Uh, which is what resonant circuits are oscillators. Um, for the exam, you need to know that the inductance and capacitance in a tank circuit determines the frequency of, the, uh, of an LC oscillator. A linear amplifier is an electronic uh, circuit whose output is proportional to its input, uh, but capable of delivering more power uh, into a load. Um, for the exam, you need to know that an amplifier in which the output preserves the input waveform describes a linear amplifier. One thing you need to remember about uh, the Class C amplifier is that FM is the mode that the Class C amplifier stage is appropriate for amplifying, or amplifying a uh, modulated signal. That brings us to the uh, next seven, uh, next section, uh, G7C, Gulf 7 Charlie, uh, which deals with uh, receivers, transmitters, uh, filters, and oscillators. Just can't get enough of these oscillators. And the first thing we need to know is that a filter is used uh, to process signals from a balanced modulator, then sends them to a mixer and the same signal sideband phone transmitters. Um, and you can tell by the, uh, the, the block diagram here that right out of the uh, balance, uh, balanced modulator goes, passes through a filter and straight into the mixer, just like the uh, question says. 
we're talking about uh, sideband, uh, particularly sideband phone. So it uses a, a balanced uh, modulator method of, of single sideband generation, which uses a phase shift technique that causes one side of the bands to be connected to the output. Um, for the exam, you need to know that a bal balanced modulator is used to combine signals from the carrier oscillator and speech amplifier, then send the result to a filter and some single sideband phone transmitters. Back to our block diagram, of, uh, you can see that the local oscillator, which generates a particular frequency, and the RF uh, amplifier and tuning uh, are combined into a mixer and then passed along to the IF uh, amplifier and filter. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that a mixer is used to process signals from the RF amplifier and local oscillator, then send the result to the IF filter and the superheterodyne receiver. Uh, perhaps you uh, recall from technician license course uh, that a product detector is a type of demodulator used uh, for AM and single sideband signals. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that a product detector is used to combine signals from an IF amplifier and a BFO, or beat, freak, uh, beat Frequency Oscillator, and send the result to the AF amplifier and some sideband receivers. Um, in a lot of modern equipment, they're going to what's called uh, direct digital synthesis, uh, which uh, uses... Uh, a reference clock or a, a crystal oscillator um, and it goes into the circuitry, performs uh, its magic and creates a really stable uh, signal or uh, frequency. Uh, for the exam you need to know that a, a variable frequency with a stable or and let me rephrase that a variable frequency with uh, the stability of a crystal oscillator is the advantage of a direct digital synthesizer. I'm, I'm sure you've heard a lot of Buddhists and yin, uh, yin yang and how it, everything's all about balance. Um, well, it's the same thing is true with, uh, with filtering and impedance. Um, for the exam, you need to know that the impedance of a low-pass filter as compared to the imp, uh, impedance of a transmission line into which it is inserted should be about the same, or it should be in balance, yin and yang. In this uh, schematic, you can see the, the RF stage is uh, thrown into the mixer and an oscillator, um, and it goes through an IF amplifier and into a detector. Um, it can actually get even simpler than this uh, little block diagram. Uh, for the exam, know that the simplest combination of stages uh, that implement a superheterodyne re receiver are an HF oscillator, mixer, and detector. In this uh, uh, block diagram, we can see an RF amplifier is feeding into a mixer, which is uh, also fed by a local oscillator. Uh, it's fed into a uh, IF amplifier stage, into a limiter. Uh, we get the automatic gain control detector, which gives feedback to the a uh, amplifiers. Um, it goes. Uh, the output of the limiter is fed into a dis discriminator, a de-emphasis stage, and then an audio amplifier, and ultimately out a speaker. For the exam, that you need to know that a discriminator is used in an analog FM receiver to convert IF F uh, output or uh, signals into audio. In mathematics, uh, quadrature is the process of constructing a square with an uh, area uh, equal to that of a circle uh, or an, another figure bound, uh, bounded by a curve. Um, the uh, IQ just is, is a what is uh, referenced by or meant by uh, the quadrature or quadrature is IQ. Um, for the exam you need to know that the phase difference between the I and Q signals that software defined radios equipment uses uh, for modulation and demodulation is 90 degrees.
Software-defined radios uh, are the latest thing in, in uh, amateur radio, and they're, I have to admit they're really cool. Um, one of the advantages of using uh, an IQ signal in a software-defined radio is that all types of modulation can be created uh, with the appropriate processing. And it's all done with processing, it's not done with uh, discrete components uh, or integrated circuits. So, you know, it's really cool stuff. Another question about uh, software-defined radio. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that a radio in which most major signal processing functions is performed by software is what is meant by the term software-defined radio, SDR. Um, makes sense, doesn't it? In uh, physics and electrical engineering, a cutoff frequency, uh, which is also known as a corner frequency or break frequency, is a boundary in the uh, system frequency response at which energy uh, flowing through the system begins uh, to be reduced uh, rather than passing through. Um, aren't you glad you don't need to know that? But for the exam, you do need to know that the cutoff frequency is the frequency above which the low-pass filter's output power is less than half of the input power. So insertion loss is talking about the attenuation or the amount of energy that's uh, uh, lost um, by the filter just being present in the circuit. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that insertion loss is a term that specifies the filter's maximum ability to uh, reject signals uh, outside its bound pass. And we already know that the bandwidth is, is a measurement between uh, two frequencies uh, to give us the, the width of uh, the area between. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that the bandwidth of a band pass filter is a measured uh, between the upper and lower frequencies. Another question uh, relating to insertion loss. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that insertion loss is the term that specifies the filter's attenuation inside its band pass. And this question deals uh, with uh, direct uh, digital synthesis. Uh, we discussed it briefly earlier. Um, for the exam, you need to know that a high stability uh, variable frequency oscillator in a transceiver is a typical application for a direct digital synthesizer. And that brings us to the end of Lesson 7. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson and it has inspired you to continue uh, pursuing your general uh, class license. I know you can do it. All you need to do is want to accomplish your goal and just keep trying. And that's true with any goal. If you haven't done so, please uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Leave any quest, uh, questions and uh, comments that you have below. And until next time, 73s and never stop learning.